Hello everyone, my name is Mitch and I'm one of the vehicle creators at BeamNG. I'm going to talk a little bit about vehicle handling in BeamNG Drive and how it compares with reality. The advantage of BeamNG's approach to vehicle physics is clear when it comes to damage modeling, but less well known is the ability of BeamNG's engine to accurately simulate car handling. BeamNG isn't all about race cars and race tracks. It features production vehicles on everyday roads, which are often in poor condition. Some cars can behave dangerously when driven to their limits. Smooth driving is important, and that's why we recommend using a gamepad or a steering wheel controller. Some newcomers to BeamNG Drive are caught off guard by how difficult it can be to control cars. Often people expect the cars to grip the road well past realistic limits, and are surprised when traction is lost at relatively low speeds. Without the tactile cues and cornering forces that you feel in reality, it's not always easy to gauge just how hard you are turning. Let's start by looking at a low speed example. It's hard to imagine losing traction when turning at just 30 km per hour, but it's entirely possible both in reality and in BeamNG Drive. I have set the steering wheel at full lock to the left. As I gradually increase my speed, I reach a point where the front tyres can no longer maintain their grip on the road surface. Despite the low speed, the g-force meter on the right tells me I'm averaging over 0.9g. This is because tighter turns result in higher g-forces and the tyres are only capable of about 0.9g of grip no matter what the speed. In fact this is quite a respectable figure similar to the grip offered by modern sports tyres. If I try to increase my speed even more, the front tyres will lose traction and start spinning, and the width of my turning circle will increase. The faster I go, the wider the turning circle will become. Now I'm going to demonstrate controlled turning at about twice that speed. In the all-wheel drive Hirochi Sunburst, I gradually increase speed while holding the car on the line of a circular skid pad. If I increase my speed too much, the car will start to stray outside the circle because the front tyres are exceeding their grip limits. This is called understeer. In order to avoid understeer, I must control the speed of the car, keeping it under 60 km per hour on this particular circle. This corresponds to a lateral force of about 0.85g. Depending on weight distribution, suspension configuration and other factors, some cars are prone to oversteering when they reach their grip limits. Oversteer is when the rear tyres lose traction and the back of the car tries to overtake the front. Unlike understeer, oversteer is an unstable condition and requires the driver to skillfully manage the angle of slip or risk spinning out of control. If you're trying to corner as effectively as possible, both understeer and oversteer should be avoided. Instead, corner speed should be carefully controlled by braking well before a turn and then steering only as much as the tyres can handle. Drifting is a driving style that relies on maintaining oversteer for as long as possible. Rear wheel drive cars are ideal for drifting, as the throttle can be used to brake or regain traction. Front wheel drive cars are prone to understeering when entering a corner too fast, but they also can drift. The easiest way to drift a front wheel drive car is by briefly pulling the handbrake, causing the rear wheels to lock up and lose traction. Recovering from a front wheel drift is easy. Simply turn opposite the direction of spin and accelerate. A vehicle's suspension components, particularly sway bars and shock absorbers, also play an important role in determining handling. In fact, if these components are missing or damaged, it's possible to flip some cars even on smooth, level ground. We've been working with engineers and programmers to implement realistic anti-lock brake, traction control and stability control systems on the newer vehicles. The game now includes a scenario showcasing the increased control that these systems allow. BeamNG doesn't compromise on realism in our simulation of cars. Our bottom-up approach to vehicle physics guarantees that each car behaves like the sum of its parts. The handling characteristics are not scripted, they simply emerge as natural products of the car's structure. This is what excites us about BeamNG Drive. The possibilities are endless because there are no predefined results. Our quest for accuracy is an ongoing one, and community feedback is always welcome. Stay tuned for lots more vehicles, maps, features, and content in the near future.